guys are so good. I, uh, I just, man, we got a great band. We, we got a closing song too, Lou? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's close. <laughs> Let me give us a prayer. Gracious Lord, I know that everybody that is here this morning, you knew they were going to be here from the foundations of the world. You knew every circumstance that's going on in their life, the feelings that they have going through their heart and their soul. Maybe they're wondering why they showed up, but you know. And uh, before they leave here today, that your Holy Ghost would reach down, touch their lives, change them, make them the men and the women that they're supposed to be, give them the ability to do so. And may we be forever more like you, we ask this and leave this the most level playing field there is. Foot of the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Bible is made up of stories. Thousands. And uh, it is the most credible, credible book you can, you can, you can read. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I gave you the statistics on the proof, the evidence of this thing we call the Bible, basically instructions before leaving earth. And yet, uh, millions of people give their best shot to discredit and say it's not so, not true. I'm going to tell you a few stories. The first story you'll be able to figure out is probably a story. A lawyer, a doctor, and a preacher were in a deer stand. Big deer stand. Monster buck comes within range to shoot. They all instantly raise their weapons and shoot. Instantly, the lawyer says, I shot it! The doctor goes, how do you know? He says, I'm the best shot here. The doctor goes, you are not. So the doctor says, this is what we're going to do. We're going to climb down. We're going to go over to the deer. And he goes, I am going to be able to tell who shot it. The lawyer, Tom Murphy, he's not here today. He's a lawyer here. <laughs> Me, the pastor, I am here today. And the doctor, this church doesn't attract doctors. So <laughs> we don't have them. I don't know what the problem is, but we don't have them. Yet, we're, we're, we're working on them. Anyways. We have a doctor? We have an eye doctor. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What? You're an eye doctor. Who's it? You're a doctor. All right, so we got an eye doctor. Son of a I love No, I'm glad we have an eye doctor. So we brought uh, uh, Kim hunting with us. Anyways, we uh, brought her down, and she looks, and she goes, I know who shot the deer. The lawyer goes, Murphy goes, who, who? Ken. Why well, do you know it was Ken? One in one ear and out the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Do you think that's a true story? Yes. Probably. Could be. You never know. I haven't funny yet with Kim, so no. But anyways. A few weeks ago, maybe you guys remember, the prophet went to tell King Ahab that uh, he was a bad king. God was going to punish him. And God told the prophet, this is what I need you to do. I need you to leave town. Get on your donkey, leave town. The prophet said, okay. And it was like, you know, do not pass go. Like when you get the get out of, go to jail card in uh, Monopoly, go directly to jail, do not pass go. So you don't get to collect the $200 for going around the board. You just go bang, right to jail. And uh, that's what God told this prophet to do. Meanwhile, an old prophet heard that this prophet was in town. He said to this prophet, he said, well, I bet, listen, go. He told his, his uh, uh, guy that works for him, he said, let's go get this prophet, bring to the house, let's have dinner. I want to sit down with them. So that prophet finds the other prophet, says, listen, this prophet, the old prophet wants to sit down and have dinner with The old prophet says, the young prophet says, no, I can't do that. God told me to be done. The other prophet says, no, God told me it was okay. So he said, oh, okay. So he goes and has dinner with him. When he gets up to leave, the old prophet says to the young prophet, you disobey God, you're going to die. A lion is going to eat you. Can you believe that? So, the Bible tells us he gets on his donkey, and he's heading out of his town, and a lion jumps out and kills the prophet. People walk by, side of the road, 
They look over, and there's a donkey and a lion and a dead prophet. It's an amazing story, isn't it? What's the name of it? What's the title of my text today? What's it say? Uh, 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 Obey God or Beat by a Lion, right? I know I, Josh asked me, what's the title for the message today? I said, uh, Obey God or Beat by a Lion. He goes, no, wait a minute. What did you say? I go, obey God or be eaten by a lion. You're going to have to text that to me. I go, Josh, it's not that hard. It says that in the Bible. So, I meet a pilot. This pilot says, Ken, I got one of the most amazing stories you've ever heard. I go, okay. He uh, Lucy vibes for the Air National Guard out of New York. He also flies for uh, United, United out of LaGuardia. And uh, he was lucky. He said, I was lucky. I got this great trip from LaGuardia down to Miami. And uh, the best thing about it is they had, I had a 24-hour layover. And they always put us up in a nice hotel right on the beach. He goes, it was, it was fantastic. Now, when he's telling me this, as I tell you, it's got to be pre-9-11. So he says that he was a flight engineer on the plane. So there's the captain, co-captain, and the flight engineer on a 727. And as he's walking on board, he sees this old guy that does not look good. And he says, he says to me, he says, I'm thinking, I hope this guy is okay. Because it'll ruin my trip if anything goes wrong. They're flying from, uh, they're flying down to uh, Miami. And all of a sudden, a little light comes on, and there's a medical He opens the door, comes out of the cabin, and there are the stewardess doing chest compressions and mouth to mouth on this guy, the old guy, on the floor. While they're doing that, this old lady comes out of the bathroom and goes, stop, stop. He, Sean, tells the lady, no, we got to do this. we got to revive him. She finally yells, stop, stop. He died a few days ago. <laughs> The stewardess throws up, he says. He's like, what? She goes, yeah. It was going to cost 2000 to put him in the bottom of the plane for only 400 to get him a seat. I'm like, no, really? Now that's... Another true story. They landed. They took her to jail. Well, they, the cops picked her up for, you know, and I'm thinking it's got to be pre-9-11 because you think they would have checked the dude's pulse going through TSA, but maybe not today. He might have just always oh, sleep and let him go. He's a little cold, you know. His eyes don't move. Might have been a... Now that's an unbelievable story, isn't it? You know, I'm like, when he told me that, I'm like, I'm using that on a Sunday morning. I don't know how I'm going to use that, but that is one of the best anecdotes I have ever heard in my And it's true. It's a true story. Now, if you have your Bibles, let's look at lions eating people some more. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 20, starting verse 35. For you guys that haven't been here, we've looked at King Ahab, who was a bad, bad king. Disobeys God all the time. Kings are leaders. And uh, for you guys that haven't been here, uh, Israel said, we want a king. We want a king to lead us. The king's job, and any good leader's job, is to protect his followers, to make sure they're healthy, to make sure they're financially taken care of, to make sure basically their society, their group, is, is healthy and, and, and does good. That's the, the job of a leader. That's A leader needs to look and make sure everything's going well and to be able to speak truth. But a bad leader, pretty soon it all becomes all about them because the power that the leader has, as we all know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. King Ahab was married to a crazy woman named Jezebel. And we saw what uh, she wanted to do to Elijah, even though Elijah called on fire from heaven. 
God and had it rain and the drought was over. But Ahab was just, he just disobeyed God all the time. And for you guys that have read this, know that God gave Ahab so many chances to come away. But he just, he had a problem of just being disobedient. It's just like a, you know, <laughs> your kid that just disobeys all the time. Except this is a grown person who's a king, who is a leader, who is supposed to be doing right and is doing nothing but, but evil. So this is uh, this God's final judgment. Um, but what I want you guys to understand is, is if you don't obey God, you're going to be by a lion. <coughs> Chapter 20, verse 35, Meanwhile, the Lord instructed one of the group of prophets to say to another man, Hit me. But the man refused to hit the prophet. Then the prophet told him, Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, a lion will kill you as soon as you leave me. And when he had gone, a lion did attack and kill him. Pretty amazing. Now listen, guys. People call themselves prophets today. Many, you may go to another ministry or see if not, they're a prophet. Here's the deal about a prophet. If a prophet said something and didn't, and it did not take place or it wasn't untrue, you were to take that prophet and kill him. Okay? Th that's the way it was. That's that was the, the task of being a prophet. If the prophet said this is what's going to happen and it didn't, then they did not speak what God wanted them to speak. And they died. The deal was, here was the deal. There was a king, and the king had prophets. And the prophets kind of had this direct revelation from God. And they listened, and God spoke to them. And then God would tell the prophets, and the prophets would tell the king how they should live, decisions they should make, whether they should go to war or not go to the war. That was the job of the prophet. The prophet had the word of God. Many of kings listened to God, didn't need prophets. When King David was doing what he was supposed to do, and God blessed him. Saul, God blessed him. Solomon, absolutely. But eventually, absolute power corrupts. It just happens. And Ahab, is just, he's, he's just been miserable. So the prophets are listening to God, and this prophet tells somebody what to do, tells this other person, and the person knows they're a prophet of God, and he says, Hit me, and he doesn't. And he says, because you did not obey God. You see it? Because you didn't obey God. Because he was God's mouthpiece. That's what a prophet is. He was God's mouthpiece. He didn't obey God. A lion ate him. A few weeks ago I said, you know what's amazing is people saw the hand of God work just like that. And I asked everybody in the audience to raise your hand if you've ever said God work in your life. And almost everybody raised their hand. And I said, isn't it amazing how quick we forget how good God can be and that he works in our lives? We just forget like that. Well, the next guy, this is what happened. Then the prophet turned to another man and said, hit me. So he struck the prophet and wounded him. So you know he hit him good. <laughs> you know, I mean, the Bible, God is so good when he writes to us. And he says, and so he hit him good. So, you know, he didn't go, oh. No, he said, okay, I am going to hit you. And, you know, maybe broke a lip, a nose, black eye, whatever. But he's wounded. Then this is what takes place next. The prophet plays the bandage over his eyes to disguise himself. And when he waited, and, and, and then he waited beside the road for the king. This would be King Ahab. As the king passed by, as the king passed by, the prophet called out to him, Sir, I was in the thick of battle, and suddenly a man brought me a prisoner. He said, Guard this man. If for any reason he gets away, you will either die or pay a fine of 75 pounds of silver. 75 pounds of silver. That was a lot then. I think that's still a lot today. Uh -huh. But while I was busy doing something else, the prisoner disappeared. Well, it's your own fault, the king replied. You have brought this judgment upon yourself. 
And you notice there's quotes on that. Well, it's your own fault. That's what the king is saying. The king replied, you have brought this judgment upon yourself. Bam! Here's what happened next. And the prophet quickly pulled the bandage from his eye. And the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. And right then and there, I, th I think the king was thinking, Duh! I probably just prophesied something bad's going to happen to me. Yes! Very true. The prophet said to him, this is what the Lord says, because you have spared the man I said must be destroyed. Now you must die in his place, and your people will die instead of his people. So the king of Israel went home, went home to Samaria, angry and sullen. Now, who cares? Who cares? I mean, you guys are thinking, man, I've disobeyed God. I have not had a lion eat me yet. Right? How many of you guys disobeyed God? Raise your hand. Good, that was everybody. All inclusive. Me too. And uh, we're, I'm here. I will be careful when I walk around my yard tonight. You know, some mountain lion come up. Oh, mountain lion ain't Pastor Ken. He did something wrong. We're going to think that about anybody that gets eaten by a lion here today at South the Rock Conference. We read your new name in the newspaper, and you read by the lion. We go, and they did something bad, they got eaten by a lion. And the Bible is full of truths that God gives you and I. And God just says, please obey me. Please obey me. Not because I want to kill you. Especially in the New Testament. It's just so... <laughs> Full of grace, full of mercy, full of, full of hope. But instead, we often choose to be eaten by a lion. We often choose to say, oh God, I, I don't need you. I'm going to do it the way I do. I don't, you know, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And then you're eaten by a lion. And I don't know what that line is. That line of hurt, that line of shame, that line of guilt. That line of lying. Because once that line gets in you, it just kind of stays and stays and stays. And it's funny, this, and, and when I read these in the Old Testament, there's so much proof of these, these stories that they're true. I mean, it was instant. There was death. Bam, he died. But how many times when you've disobeyed, your life was dead? There's no life in it. Your relationships died. The joy in your life died. Death comes in many shapes. And it steals the joy of your life away. When, uh, when I work uh, with little kids, don't have them anymore. Do it a lot. We used to sing this, sing the song O B D E I E N C D. And honestly, if I could sing all the words that I need to learn how to spell, I could spell them all. Right? You know, just poetic stuff. Work. O B D E I E N C D. Now, if I just said spell obedience, I would be stumped. But if they said spell, spell obedience, I go O B D E. I can get to you. I got it. Right? Obedience. You would think, how many of you guys would think being obedient would be easy? How many of you guys would think that it would be easy? Okay, good. Because it's, it's, it's so not, is it? Is it? When you were younger and your mom and dad told you not to do something, what did you think? Hmm, how can I do this without being caught? People go, Ken, what's it like to be a pastor to people who are your age? I go, they're just like big kids with no permission slips. You tell them not to do something and they go, no. I'm going to do it anyways. Speed limit signs, what are those? Those are suggestions. <laughs> ah, they suggested me to go 80. Fantastic. I'm going to go 40. Piss them off. Did I just say that? Sorry. They're on vacation too long. <laughs> I'm going to do 100. Take them off some more. It's weird because we we don't 
it, isn't it funny how we do things that hurt us instead of doing things that help us? Are we that foolish? I mean, listen, being away, I didn't watch a lot of news, and then I would catch some news, and I would go, and Janelle and I would go and go, what in the world is wrong with people today? Or, 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 you know, are we all just crazy? Just ridiculous. I mean, we, we saw what happened in Dallas, didn't watch any news, then later on we go, oh my goodness, Baton Rouge, three law officers died, what, what, you know, it, what is wrong with people? You know? And uh, why do people choose to be disobedient? Well, in the book of Galatians, we're not going to turn there, it talks about, we have this old man inside of us that just is rebellious. It chooses to head south so fast. My old man inside me, I learned when I don't eat, is more violent. <laughs> Janelle lets me know something and I haven't eaten and I'm, I'm over the top. blood sugar thing. But the reality is, I think, God said, here's the deal. That person was crucified with me on a cross. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives with me. See, if you're a Christ follower this morning, you took that old self, that old nature, and when we put our trust in Jesus Christ, it was nailed on that cross with Him. And every now and then He tries to pop up, make you do foolish things that are ridiculous, and you just go, no, he's, he's screwed. And it's no longer I, because I will screw up. I will say things that I should not say. I will head south. I want to, I want to be in control. I, 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 I. It's all about me. And God goes, no, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with you at all. It has everything to do with me, God says, and others. And obey. Because if you don't obey, your life will, your life will be dead. And there will be no life in it. You will think the things you are doing will bring you life, but they will not. They bring you choose life. You don't want to be eaten by a lion. Now it would be goofy if somebody got eaten by a lion this week, wouldn't it? I mean, no. <laughs> There's one that disobeys God a lot. <laughs> Bernie's staying inside all week long. <laughs> it, would be, it would be something. Well, I, I'll wrap it up in a second. The band's going to come up and give us a song and then I'll
You know, the prodigal son, he decided that he didn't need his family, he didn't need God, he didn't need anything, and so he ran, 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 till one day he opened his eyes while eating with a bunch of pigs, totally unclean, eating, his life was shot, and he said, man, I should just go back home. And how many times in our lives there you go, do we need to just say, I need, you need to go back home. You just need to come back to God. You know, maybe you today, one time you go, oh, I love God, and then you hated God, and then you didn't know God, then you said, I don't believe in God. But today you're going, you know what? I need God. I need to obey God. We all need to obey God. And there's nothing better than trusting, obeying God. God in every aspect of life. And uh, uh, so, if you were a prodigal son, if you are that prodigal son, and you were here today, no place better to be, better to be than the foot of the cross. <clears throat> Invitation is just come back and know Jesus. He loves you. And uh, that's it. It's the best thing. Don't get eaten by a lion. Obey God. Obey God. Give your best shot. Might be tough. Obey God. You know. Why don't you join hands with the person next to you? You don't mind. Heavenly Father, I said earlier, because you told me to say it, that you bring all of us here together. You know everybody that was going to be here. You knew that the band was going to do these songs and uh, that you were going to use them in our lives. God, there's lions that want to destroy our lives. God, give us the strength to be obedient to you. For the prodigal person that's here today, that they go, man, I got to get back. I got to run home to my Savior. For the person who has never run home to Jesus, maybe they're going, man, I better figure this out. Get home and see my Savior, Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, Lord. Um, that we would do our, our best to be more obedient to you. Because in obedience, there's joy. And that's one thing that this world just cannot figure out. Is joy. And uh, so God, help us, to, help, us, help us to help them figure that out. Figure you out. Thank you for this time together. Just the grace that you give us through your son, Jesus Christ. May nobody in this room be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May everybody in this room they, that knows you say, I'm so glad to know you. And Father, I pray that you bring all these people back next Sunday. To me and a family, we were saying earlier, the hardest thing to do is go to church on Sunday. Because there is like a thousand other things to do. But God, that you would bring them back this band that ministers grace to them, that your word that ministers life, that Father, when we leave here every Sunday, that we've just got a little bit more fuel for the tank to make it through the battles that we face all week long. We love you. Thank you for this time. We leave our lives at the most level playing field there are. There is. The foot of the cross. Before you guys open your eyes or anything like that, i got a reminder. There's a a family that's their last Sunday here, I guess, like, until Jesus comes back, possibly. So, God, we want to want to thank you for uh, Jen and uh, Joe and Salzer. Forgive them for leaving. <laughs> As they find another place to just minister the uh, gifts that you give to them. Um, uh, just watch over and keep them safe. It's been such a pleasure. Too bad for them. And I didn't like them a part of this ministry. So, Watch over them. And, uh, may they bless others in Southern California, if that's possible. <laughs>
We ask all this in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. For